Okay, so we're still live from the AGI Foundation event in Austin, and uh, we are the social here that the 5V Media team is uh, is hosting. It's pretty, like, lots of fun here. It's a great event. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. A lot of fun. And uh, we have our last guest of the night. <laughs> last one? Last one. Okay, last one. <laughs> nobody else is waiting. Yeah, nobody else. So, well, tell us about yourself. Who are you? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. So, Tom Dever. Yep. I've been in uh, IoT space for the last 25 years. Um, all kinds of different products that we put together um, for different companies. And... Uh, this is the next generation is now the uh, AI. AGI. Uh, and so if you want to get yeah. funding for your company, put AI at the beginning of the name or the end of the name. So, so invest like in what you're doing. <laughs> 25 years of experience in this domain, because it's actually not a new domain. Like AGI is it's a continuity or a combination, let's say. It's a combination of different technology worlds. Like and, and But it's very much like inheriting from a lot of what the IoT has been doing and prior to IoT was like smart connected devices. M to M, machine to machine, machine to machine. Yeah, we, we can go back, right? So yeah. there's nothing really new, is there? I, I would say that what's gotten exciting is the technology has shrunk in size and cost. Okay. And so I think when, when M2M was, you know, was popular 25 years ago, um, you could build a solution, but it might cost you $1,000 or $2,000 to build this prototype. Okay. Um, now, with the way things have gone, I can put together an IoT solution for $100 or $200. True. And so it's... Oh, ah, we just lost the lights. Like, it's the end of the light. <laughs> <laughs> the lights are kind of <laughs> Like... Yeah, keep keep like we'll uh, don't don't go away. We're not dead. I have a solution for that because I knew that battery will die before the others. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is give us some light here. Let's see, there you oh, go. Fantastic. There we go. Look at that. We're back We're here. Right? Up again. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. prepared. <laughs> so yeah, it's I think it's gotten really interesting how the technology has shrunken in size and cost uh -huh. that you can go and develop a prototype for a very small amount of money. So what that ends up enabling are a lot of startups that don't need a ton of funding to get started and they can go off and build a product and prove a solution to solve a problem with a very small amount of money. And so I think it's, it's opened up the doors and, and you see it here. There's a ton of startup yeah, folks yeah. here. Um, you see them because they, they are able to develop stuff at a very low cost. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's interesting. But do you think the customers are ready to make the move and evolve? Because things are evolving pretty fast. You're talking about you know the price and and then you know evolution of hardware. But like most of the customers that would be potentially using these solutions are evolving more slowly than this technology. Ah. <laughs> you see what I mean? Especially yeah. in in domains like industrial automation, and we have lots of like and and there's also the notion of regulations that will impose systems to have been existing for some time before they use to be put in the hands of consumers or, you know. So so do you think there's going to be a, a, a gap between, you know, where things are at in terms of the technology capabilities and when we're going to see actual solutions leveraging? It's an adoption thing. You're, yeah. you're exactly right. Uh, so the way that they've been doing stuff in the past that has worked and is validated and they're supporting, they, they don't want to change. You know, and so you have to show them a, a fundamental difference that will change the outcomes, either a business outcome or a technology outcome, could be either way, um, that will change how things are managed so that it makes it easier, easier, faster, yeah. cheaper, uh, more efficient. You, know, you have to prove yeah, that ROI, point. ROI, ROI, right? So you, you have, have to, to have ROI. So you have to have a business problem that you're solving with technology. But I think the, the fact that it's got a lot cheaper actually makes it easier for you to prove the solution out. Uh, and build something with you know very quickly and very in very efficiently, um, but then adoption is still going to take time because yep. now you've got this new thing, and when you talk about AI, you talk about LLMs or something like that. Now you've got something that's not quite as understood. Like it's so, pretty confusing, actually. Do, to ask me. Yeah, <laughs> do do I want my machine to make some decisions about what it's doing on its own? Yes. Well, I want to make yes. sure that at least it has some guardrails mm -hmm. so that it doesn't go outside of boundaries that I set. Uh, and we worked with yeah. medical devices and industrial automation, putting AI into them, yeah. but making sure that it, from an embedded perspective, it was bounded. Yeah. So the AI can make decisions inside of boundaries, yes. but it couldn't go beyond those boundaries yes. to make decisions that would potentially harm a person, yeah. whether it's a patient or whether it's a machine, yeah. machinery, yeah. 
They can't make a decision that could do that. I'm saying there's a more basic piece of software that would actually limit the super smart piece of software. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's I what it is. Boundaries. <laughs> I set up those boundaries. Yeah. Yes. It's, it, it's, it's something that has to be done. Yeah. Right? It has to be contained in some way. Yeah. Because you want to make sure the device doesn't go yeah. outside of the boundaries. Until someone is able to build an AI model that is deterministic. <laughs> you see, like we had this like long debate like 10 years ago about what is real time. And, and this notion that a real-time OS was to, to allow you to have software that was deterministic. So whatever the situation in the parameters, the output would be no. Yeah. Right? What, what I've seen is the technology is getting to the point where you can put two different processors in a system. So yeah. like Arduino is one of our customers. Yeah. Um, they have a, a, it's a system on a module. Yeah that has a Linux type operating yeah, system on yeah. one core yeah. and has a, uh, an MCU as a second core. Yeah. And so your deterministic stuff can go on the MCU okay. that has, is running it, is not running an yeah, operating yeah. system, yeah, it's yeah. running bare metal, uh -huh. it's very deterministic and runs in that, in that big you know, loop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But then you have a Linux based system that now you can do the graphics and other things that are kind okay. of Yes, here. Okay. So you just separate the two out. Yeah. And it's low enough cost that you can do that. But what do you run AGI? So you run the AGI on, on the Linux box. On, on Linux, the Linux yeah. Part, yeah. Part, right? So it's not, you could run on the yeah. controller as well. Yeah. Um, but again, if you want to determine the nature of deterministic, you're, exactly. you're probably not exactly. going to run AI. Yeah, because the nature of the of, of the models themselves and the way they've been developed is is that they will lend to a certain level of accuracy on their inference. Yeah. Right. And, and you decide what is that level that is good enough, yeah. right? And, and, Which, and the boundaries as well. And setting up, and the boundaries, yes. Yeah. And setting those up so that if, if it is a deterministic system, you know, it's got time slots. And so uh -huh. the, the AI can operate inside of a time slot, but that's all it gets. Yeah, totally. It totally. has to be done at that point. Yeah, we're discussing earlier with someone who's uh, she's a, she's a teacher uh, in uh, John, John Hopkins. Like, she's focused on robotics. And we're talking about the notion of making these AGI models like more specialized, even tinier, mm. getting them to have a level of, of you know, uh, uh, of, of result that is higher to the accuracy, but more specialized. And then you would distribute the intelligence and you would have different parts of your robotic arm, for example, with different types of AIs. And then you would, you would orchestrate yeah. communication between these different nodes. And there you could get closer to real time and to determinism by having like smarter piece of, of, of things talking to each other. I can, yeah, you can even do this in the same MCU. So yeah. now there's a, a, a system called Atom yeah. based on a, a technology called Oprah, yeah. which is Linux Foundation. Uh, and Atom is yeah. really cool because it containerizes the environment, uh -huh. containerizes yeah. the AI. So now you can make it terms of based on the container that it's running in. Yeah. And it also makes it very easy to upgrade yeah. and, and change out the... You know, the firmware itself in that one container yeah. and just affect that. Yeah. And so only one piece of the code is being affected. Yeah. So very interesting technology. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Actually, I had Jason on, on the show last time we did live, actually. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, and Adam's I think he's going to be around tomorrow. Oh, uh, I awesome. think Jason is going to be with Stefan, one of the two. It's very interesting technology. If you're an embedded engineer, that is a technology you should be taking a look yeah. at. Yeah, and, and the, I love the approach of leveraging the WebAssembly yeah. because then it, it's kind of like, simplifies the embedded development by allowing you to, to code with whatever language you want. Docker on a diet. <laughs> it's like Docker, that's <laughs> Docker on a diet. You can run whatever address. you want inside of that containerized environment, but it runs on kilobits worth of space. Sure. So instead of being sure. megabytes worth sure. of space, it's kilobytes. And that's interesting you bring that up because this notion of containerization coming down to the microcontrollers extends the story that lots of the hyperscalers are trying to build around, well, first microservices in the cloud. Now we're saying with Kubernetes clusters and Docker containers, the ability to bring that to the edge, heavier edge to start with. Yeah. But now you can start seeing maybe an app model that could span across all of these platforms and you can have a distribution of your system or intelligence that will span across all of that, right? So yeah. you could be able to say, hey, you know, I'm going to like read from that vibration sensor, like deploy that piece of software down there and it's going to communicate with that one here that does inference and vision plus that and then send the data out to some other microservices doing something else, maybe in the cloud, maybe in another place. That's, that's, that's pretty yeah, interesting. It also allows you to use engineers and, and software developers that maybe are used to that 
environment. Yes. As opposed to hiring very expensive embedded firmware engineers. True. Which I don't know. I've been to Brits universities with Arduino and, and the educational side of things. Yes. Um, the kids that are in university today do not want to be embedded engineers. There's very few of them that actually want to be embedded firmware engineers. They love cloud services. They yeah. love micro, micro environments that can operate in. Yeah, yes. They love the higher languages, um, but they don't necessarily want to go and program in C. <laughs> you know, they just don't want I to like do that. <laughs> I, I grew up on Fortran, like, Pascal, then C. Yes, we all like, like. <laughs> That's what it is. And so, yeah, I don't actually, I don't actually program in C++. Like, <laughs> I stayed in C. But they don't want to do that, right? They want to use the languages that are yeah. easier to build things and sure. trigger to build things. Sure, sure, sure. I, I can see that. And actually, I don't think they've been teaching many classes. What worries me, though, is that even though you're working in a container, like, you still need to have notions of what's going on under the hood, right? And so... All abstracted it's away. All abstracted. All APIs. It's like, I'm going to allocate memory, and I don't know how memory works, right? It's like kind of a, kind of a little bit scary for me. Well, maybe Malog from... ruined everything in the first place. Yeah. yeah. That's, the thing. yeah. That's what happened. But you didn't have to actually arrange it yourself. Yeah. Now, now, if something like Atom is doing that correctly, the right way, putting the boundaries where it needs to be for developers to not go too crazy on their code, right? Because yeah. I'm always scared when I see interpreted languages running on embedded devices in terms of, you know, response time and, and, and determinism. Never know how it's, it's every like, time it's compiled, it can be different. Yes. Yes. It can exactly. make a huge it's difference. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. So, we'll see where that goes. But I think the, the promise yeah. is pretty interesting. I mean, having an app model that spans across all the types of edges from tenure to heavier. That's super interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I like that. So, how do you like the event so far? How is uh, it's, been, oh, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. No, this is a perfect <laughs> venue. Um, lots of our customers are actually here, so that's okay. fantastic to see them. And actually, uh, there's customers of our customers here as well. So I've met a few folks from different companies that you know are interested in new technology. Yeah. They're here to learn about AJI. Okay. Um, at the same time, our customers are here that can teach them about the technologies they have. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's, it's been a great event. Cool. Well, it was nice for you to stop by. Um, we should Appreciate have you on the i shoot for longer episodes yeah. someday soon. So we'll definitely do that. And, uh, well, to everyone who tuned in, thanks a lot. Uh, we are just stopping for tonight. And uh, we'll see you soon on the i shoot right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. See you soon.